Welcome to Goober Town Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today we have a mystery box. This comes to us from Casey at eBay Miniature Rescues, and he tells me there's a mini in here that he wants me to paint. So, right off the bat, great box choice. This is a delightful mystery box. Let's see what's in here. I can't wait. So, Casey and I are doing a little bit of a model exchange. This is a collaboration. I sent him a model, he sent me a model, and uh, we're gonna paint them up. So right now is the moment of truth. I am seeing what I'm painting up. Okay, open on camera, says this note. Uh, mini first or note first? Mi note first. All right, these are rules. Um, let's see what they are. Here are the rules. Painted as close to the box art as you can but uh, with a strong focus on blue, and the skin must be dead flesh. Okay. What do we have here? Oh. Whoa. Homunculus. Wonderful. Um, I don't know how well Casey knows this, but uh, my first army was Dark Eldar. I have many, many, many Dark Eldar models, and many of them still need to be painted. And somehow Homunculus is one of the few models I do not have. So this is awesome. We're going Homunculus, box art, dead flesh. Let's get to it. Okay. The good news here is that Games Workshop has some nice, clear images of the box art in their online catalog. There's even a 360 degree rotating view so that there's no doubt about what any of the bits are supposed to look like. Kind of a good news, bad news situation actually, since it'd be really obvious if I didn't pull it off. To give me a bit of wiggle room, Casey asked to emphasize blue and to go for a dead skin look. What I'm gonna do is just entirely swap out the flesh tone for a dead blue. Everything else I'll do according to the box art. I started off with a zenithal primer job. Black primer with a squirt of white ink from above. More than anything, this helps me to see details better and helps me to learn the contours and subtleties of the model. I also got texture on the base early. Often I like to get base texture on before priming, but I forgot this time. That's okay though. This Vallejo ground texture is nice and durable, and it takes paint quite well with or without a primer coat. Okay, time to start slopping on some base coats. For the most part, I'm using Army Painter and Vallejo equivalents to the Games Workshop recommendations. But in cases where I actually had the Games Workshop paint, I used that. I won't walk you through every step in the paint scheme, since you can get a lot of these instructions from Duncan himself, but I'll talk about some of the more interesting details. Warhammer TV doesn't have a homunculus episode, but it does have episodes for a lot of the bits and colors that show up on this model. Anyway, the blue flesh is going to be all me, so let's talk about that. A few weeks back, I took a painting class with the great Sam Lenz. A major skill that we worked on in the class was wet blending, specifically monster flesh. As luck would have it, the monster I worked on had dead blue flesh, so this is the perfect chance to try to practice those skills that Sam tried to teach me. The idea here is that blue goes in the shadows, pale flesh tone goes in the lit regions, and there's a transition in between the two. Slap on both colors quickly, then use a clean brush to blend the border region. Watching Sam work really motivates me to try to get better with this technique. I didn't know how this was going to turn out on this model, but it's never wrong to practice an experiment. Thematically, this homunculus guy is a friggin' weirdo who's been injecting himself with all sorts of horrible fluids. His skin can really be any color. If I don't do a very good job on the color transition, that's okay. That just makes him look more disturbing with blood settling in ways that really shouldn't. Still, I'd like to try to get some practice and make some smooth transitions. Probably the best patch of skin on this model to demo the wet blend technique is from the top of his head to the shadowed face and neck and chest. My own head got in the way a little bit here, I was just too focused on trying to get a sweet blend. Speaking of the top of heads, check out how pale his scalp is and how deep blue his chest and his feet are. In theory, this is all basically the same skin tone, but the variety and the transitions give the illusion of shadows. 
shadows, and extremely ill health. Okay, moving on with those base coats, one color at a time. This model is pretty busy and has a variety of different materials. Flesh, armor, bionics, chemicals, tentacles, tentacle bionics, weapons, a cloak stitched together from the skins this sick man has collected. There's a lot of stuff to paint on this little model. We're just cranking through it one color at a time. So this is actually the first collaboration in the history of Goober Town Hobbies. I wanted to work with eBay Miniature Rescues because I love what Casey does over there. After you've finished watching this video, you should definitely go check out eBay Miniature Rescues. The general format is that Casey takes used models that have seen better days, and he gives them a total makeover. He's a great painter with a lot of creative ideas, and he is absolutely fearless when he's using an airbrush. The technical qualities of his videos is excellent. Everything is in focus, 4K, music, transitions, the works. Beyond that, he chooses fun models, and his videos are just really entertaining. Back to business. For the tentacles, I'm putting a red wash over a beige undercoat. In the box art, there's actually a strong color transition from the top tentacle to the bottom tentacle, and I'm trying to achieve that by using thin layers of wash at the top and several thick layers of wash at the bottom. I came back to the flesh of the homunculus with a blue wash to add definition and smooth out those color transitions a bit. The wet blend base coat is a great start, but it still gets a wash and final highlights like anything else. Next up is some highlights on the armor. I actually went out and bought a few Games Workshop paints for this. I've always collected Dark Eldar, but I've never actually tried the box art colors of Incubi Darkness highlighted with Cabalite Green and Sybarite Green. For whatever reason, my normal inclination is to not paint the box art. Well, Casey finally got me to try painting a Dark Eldar armor scheme that's been around since 5th edition, and I kinda like it. Edge highlighting is tricky for me though, so I gotta lean back from the camera, hold the model at a ton of different angles, and really concentrate to get a passable result. Somewhere in here, I think I also put a tiny little dot of white and a tiny little dot of black for his right eye. I didn't even bother painting his left eye. Okay, we're gonna keep on keeping on putting down those colors. So yeah. This video is just half of a collaboration between Goobertown Hobbies and eBay Miniature Rescues. No spoilers, but I sent Casey a really cool model that was in really terrible shape. It had a bad paint job before it sat in an attic for years and got covered in dust, dead insects, and rat poo. Anyway, eBay Miniature Rescues did some rescuing and now it's like a friggin' display piece. Make sure to check out that video after this one. Don't leave quite yet though. We're on to painting chemical tanks. I'm going to try to paint these tanks exactly how Duncan from Warhammer TV paints them. First, I'm using Warpstone Green for the liquid color. I'm filling up these bulbs about halfway, and I'm doing my best to make the level of the liquid parallel to the ground. Then, at the meniscus, I'm highlighting with Moot Green. A little later on, I'll hit these tanks with a gloss varnish to improve the overall effect. This is my first time trying to paint vials of liquid, and I got a passable result from just following along with Duncan. I always love trying new things and seeing how they turn out. So much the better if they turn out moderately well. On to the cloak. We're starting with a nice light beige. I've already outlined the patches with a brown wash. Then I pulled out a variety of washes, thinned them down a bit, and started coloring in each segment with a slightly different color. Duncan from Warhammer TV has a tutorial video for these cloaks as well, if you'd like to have this explained in a British accent. I have used this scheme once before myself when I was painting up the cloak for an Archon, and it does work pretty well. Once those washes are dry, I can go back and add in the stitches. All of the major colors are on the model now, and we're getting down to smaller and smaller details, highlights, and corrections. Each of these little steps brings us closer and closer to a finished model. Back to story time for a moment. Goobertown Hobbies and eBay Miniature Rescues actually have some fun history. On Christmas Day 2018, Games Workshop just announced a revamp of Night Goblins, and they started calling them Gloomspike Gits. Well, I was on board for painting up some Night Goblins. That evening, I went looking for a fun paint scheme, and I came across eBay Miniature Rescues for the first time. Casey had done up some night goblins with really striking yellow robes, and I knew right then that I had to make my goblins look like that. 
At that moment in time, Hoobertown Hobbies had 50 subscribers and eBay Miniature Rescues had 75. Long story short, the video I made with those goblins was a success with YouTube's algorithm and really sped up the growth of Goobertown Hobbies. In the meantime, Casey kept pumping out awesome content and both of our channels have seen crazy growth in the last few months. I think this model exchange is a really fun format for a collaboration and I'd like to turn it into a series. Hopefully there are many more collaborations to come, but I'm really glad Casey was willing to take part in this pilot episode. Okay, we are getting down to it. Here's where the model stands now. From a distance, it looks pretty good, but all blown up in 4K on my computer screen, there's still a lot of work to be done. I'm going to go into a final corrections phase here where I jump around fixing as many errors as I can find in an hour or two. I'm going back through most of the colors that I used and neatening little things up, strengthening some highlights and shadows, smoothing out some blends, and fixing anything I can find. Eventually though, we've got to call it done and move on with our lives. Here's a bit of dead grass as the final touch. And here we are. I'm going to give myself a solid B. This looks basically like a blue skinned version of the cover art. I'm clearly not at the level as the heavy metal painters, but that's okay. I'm happy with what I did here today. Something that worked out surprisingly well is that changing the skin tone from a warm color to a cool color didn't wreck the overall color composition of the model. There are other warm and cool colors scattered pretty evenly about the figure that compensate and balance things out pretty nicely actually. I think the blue flesh looks good, and I'm happy to have another HQ done and ready for my Dark Eldar army. So this was a pretty straightforward painting challenge, but extremely valuable. When I choose my own color schemes, sometimes I'll make a choice to work with colors and techniques that I'm already pretty good with. This little challenge got me to step a bit outside my comfort zone and try some new things. All in all, mission successful. Well there we go, this was really fun. I always like a good mini painting challenge and it was great doing a collaboration with Casey. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, share, ring the bell, all that good stuff. Um, if you found your way here from eBay Miniature Rescues, well then welcome aboard, I'm glad to have you. you know, please say hi down below. And if you haven't been to eBay Miniature Rescues yet, then I really recommend that you do that right now. The mini that I sent to Casey is truly ridiculous and I just know that he's going to knock it out of the park with his paint scheme. So yeah, I wouldn't lead you wrong on this. Go check out eBay Miniature Rescues. Okay, that about does it for this time. Thank you so much for watching.